92 Chevy Lumina with a no start. Going for speed on this one at one of my shops. Mentioned this in, in uh, my last video. I had some comments, questions on it and uh, why I do this. But first thing I'm gonna do, turn the key on and I'm gonna look for my check engine light or in this case, service engine soon. And you see that it's lit. And the reason I wanna do that, I just wanna make sure the computer's alive. Uh, if you turn the key on and you don't have a check engine light that lights, you know, one of the first things you wanna start doing is looking for blown fuses, things like that. And that would be the direction that you would go. Um, in, in my case here, um, I do have a tech engine light that's lit. Now, if I had a tachometer on the dash, I would look for the tack to bounce or move during the crank. So I'm gonna crank it. So it's a crank and it's a no start. Gotta go under the hood now and check for spark, which is the next easiest thing. See what we got. Okay, next step, I'm under the hood. And again, working by myself. So what I've done is I've, I've rigged up a, uh, a little jumper here. Uh, it's actually a tool you can buy. You guys ask me part numbers all the time. Um, there's your part number. It's made by Matco. There's a bunch of manufacturers that make this. It's just a little jump tool so I can crank, crank the engine myself. I have the key on right now because I need power to my ignition system, my injection system, the computer. Um, I have one end rigged to the starter S post. Uh, that's the solenoid wire and the other end going right to battery positive. And so I can check this thing myself. And the first thing I'm gonna do is, on this design anyway, with these three individual coil packs, I'm just gonna pop these plug wires off of one of the end coils. And nice thing about a waste spark is uh, it really doesn't matter how you put them back on as long as they go on the same coil. So I'm not overly concerned about which wire goes where. And I'm, on this design only, I wanna stress that, this design only, when I crank this engine over, uh, I want to see spark jump between this tower. Make sure that showed up on camera there. You can see clearly this engine has spark. Now a little bit of history. Uh, the garage owner has already checked fuel pressure, so I'm not going to go there. And he claims it has 45 pounds of pressure. So that means we have good fuel pressure, we have good spark. Next thing I'm gonna do, as this is an old school 3.1 with the Multec one injectors, they're known for shorting, is I'm gonna check the injectors for a short. Now on this design, as I've shown in other videos, there's a four pin connector that lives back here that we can do some tech, uh, checks on. On this design, it doesn't have that. The computer's actually under the hood, which is right here. I've already moved the coolant bottle out of the way. Um, to access the computer and the connector I'm looking for, we're looking for these two connectors right here. And the nice thing about knowing system designs is knowing where to go, what to do next, and I'm pretty confident that it is the light blue control wire right here on this one in, uh, connector that's gonna be the control wire for all of my fuel injectors. So I'm gonna put an amp probe right here. I'm gonna measure all the, the injectors firing at the same time. This is a group fired system, and I wanna see what my amperage waveform looks like. So that's what I'm doing next. Okay, before I forget, some of you guys might be thinking, well, why didn't he check the other two coils? Well, you have to think about the symptoms. This car is not even trying to start. So let's say the two coils I didn't check uh, aren't firing and it was a spark issue, wouldn't the car try to start on the two cylinders that we do have spark? So I don't need to check the other ones. The car's not trying to start. I'm pretty confident we have spark all the way across the board. Again, going after the injectors. Okay, so my blue control wire, my injector control for all six. And uh, you guys get on me about all the expensive equipment I'm using. So um, I'm gonna break out my old school Vantage and uh, I'm gonna show you the setup I'm gonna use on this. So, uh, you know, you guys can buy this thing off eBay for a few hundred dollars. Um, they, they don't make this anymore, but it certainly is capable of doing what I want to show you. Let me try to get the glare off the screen here. Okay, so uh, the what I'm gonna pick on this, and this isn't really a scope, but it, it will, it has scoping features. I'm gonna go to the waveform viewer. And now all these settings on here, these are just uh, time base and voltage scale. So you can really pick anything you want to. It doesn't matter. I'm gonna pick a digital low frequency signal, but that's just because it set me up on specific time bases. I'm on a 
50 millisecond time base, and uh, that should be pretty good for injectors. And I'm on a uh, 14 volt scale. I'm gonna change that. I'm gonna use my amp probe set on a 100 millivolts equals one amp scale. So that would be one volt is gonna be 10 amps. That's gonna be the conversion we have to use. So I'm setting this on a 10 amp scale for the peak, which is one volt. And uh, I generally like my bottom line to be not at zero because I want my line to be just above the bottom of the screen. That's negative uh, 100 millivolts, or in our, in, our, in our case, it's gonna be negative one amp, okay? So using my amp probe, so this would be you know, one of your more expensive tools, I guess, a few hundred bucks for an amp probe, set on a 20 amp scale, which again, conversion is 100 millivolts per amp, and I'm gonna clip that over my, uh, over my blue wire. And uh, nice that I have uh, my little remote here, and we're gonna crank it. We probably have to change our time base and our scales a little bit, maybe. Let's see what we got. All right, don't know if you guys saw that, but that's confirmed already that this has shorted injectors. Uh, you have to know a little bit about the car. That little square wave you saw on the screen was actually off the screen. So I'm gonna have to change this to a two volt, which is now 20 amps. And I'm gonna change my time base. We were on 50 milliseconds. I'm gonna go down to, I don't know, we'll go 30. And then my trigger, I wanna move this over. This is all stuff that you can do with an old school scope, which is really not a scope, it's a graphing multimeter. Watch it again. All right, let's see if I can go back and I need another hand here to freeze it. Do you see the shorted injector? It's a square wave. Let's pull up. Uh, let's do the record feature. There we go. All right, sorted injectors confirmed, no question about it. Um, give you guys a number here on what we're talking about. The peak of this here is, uh, looking at my numbers at the bottom, 1.28 volts. So do your math. That's uh, almost 13 amps of current. So that'd be 12.8 amps of current flow. Again, from other videos that I've done, and I will throw a hyperlink in here so you guys can watch them. Uh, this thing should be drawing about 0.7 of an amp per injector. That's 0.7 times six. So if my math is right, that would be 4.2 amps total. And uh, we're way beyond that. And the one thing that we really wanna pay attention to is this straight up line right here. We don't want to see that we're done this thing needs a group of injectors. Now I know you're thinking, well why not change one? Or why not change two? You guys gotta understand, the intake covers all the injectors. I can't see them. This intake would have to come off, and then we could do indiv individual checks. It's not worth it on these Multec ones. It needs a group of injectors. I'm not sticking around for that part of it. I'm done. It's pay time. Time to go home. Shorted injectors. Hope you like that one.